Hello, welcome back to another new video. Into this video, I'll be showing you another interesting external induction lamp. Here, instead of one toroid, we have two toroid here, the toroid transformer. But the electric field adds up, so the winding has to be in certain directions to each other, so they have to be in clearing phase. So here we can see it's the amalgam, a tiny cute little glass bulb, if we can see here. Here is probably amalgam of zinc that has low melting point, filled in this tiny little glass bulb. As the lamp warms up, the glass bulb warms gently, realizing it's in a much cooler condition compared to the rest of the lamp. So when it turns off, amalgam will recondense, mercury vapor will recondense back to amalgam first than anywhere else of the lamp. This in theory helps with lowering the amount of mercury used in lamp, also preventing mercury get absorbed by the phosphor. Because it has two toroids, in theory it can be operating at slightly lower voltage compared to previous one single toroid and that allows a much longer lamp. In theory you can add up as many toroids as you want, but they all have to be added up in phase. And the original circuitry of the driver broke, so here I've got another driver. This driver is operated with two MOSFETs, a ballasting inductor, and the rest of the circuitry with the driver toroide, the driver transformer, or known as gate drive transformer. Looks extremely similar to the really common use circuitries, known as the fluorescence lamp driver. Here instead we use two BGT and a ballasting inductor. And the ballasting inductor in starts off with probably is driven in resonance as well, as the coil is not loaded to begin with. And to add the extra point of safety, just in case if the lamp did not strike on ignition, I've wired up a 100 watts bulb in series with the ballast, so the ballast will not get damaged if somehow the wire come loose. Turn it on. Extremely bright. Unbelievable. Just for a glass discharge vessel with no electrode whatsoever. All energy just being coupled directly by magnetic field. And it's also really, really efficient with a really good colored tempering. And there's some minor field like flickering. It can be mitigated with better filtering network. But the flicker is nowhere as, ad as severe as general fluorescence lamp running on magnetic ballast. As you can see, the flicker is subtle as there's two capacitor electrolytic filtering out the mains, but there's still noticeable flickers. And here is the amalgam pot. It will slowly get warm up, much, but it's much, much cooler than the rest of the lamp. As it warms up even further, the color reach become much, much more stable, the color temperature as well as the intensity of the lamp increases, as there's more mercury vapor in the lamp. Induction with external electrode can probably last about to 100,000 hours with no issues, and the first things to fail is generally always the ballast. So in theory, if you equip yourself with some replacement transistors, probably some replacement diode and some capacitor, this lamp in theory can last you up to 10 years in, uh, in general use, like not too severe use, with like not too regular on and off cycles, since each on and off cycles induces stress in the electronic components for a further failure. By choosing good electronic components, for example the capacitor, instead of choosing cheap capacitors, if you use some really expensive Rubicon capacitors with better rating and the lower ESR, in theory this capacitor can last up to 5 years for electrolytic. And be watch out for any component that might get hot, replace it with a higher value. Always you can wire up a bulb in series. A bulb in series probably you choose the incandescence of a higher wattage. As long as the bulb doesn't much get any hotter or probably just barely warm to touch, it wouldn't waste much energy anyway. 
In this case, if any of the components fails, the failure will not be end up catastrophically and the circuit board will not get damaged by any how. Probably electronic components will still get damaged. With the main resonance capacitor, you want to make sure you use high quality capacitors as this circuit runs in resonance to start off with in order to ignite the lamp. And anyway, hope you like it. Thanks for watching.